Hello people, this is self Turts and in this video we are going to solve a basic array data structure and algorithm problem that is find sum of elements in an array. So what we are going to do, we are going to define an array here and we'll be finding the sum of elements which are present inside that array by using some coding. So I'll give you a uh, idea that what we are going to do, we are going to create an array which will be having eight elements. So there are eight element one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll be finding the sum of these elements that is one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight. So this array is present here and we know that in computer science array is having a index of zero based. So the index starts from zero and it goes up to seven, which is the length of this array minus one. Now we'll try to do some coding here that will come to our Eclipse terminal. I am doing my coding of Java in Eclipse and here I have created a project that is Java project and the name of the project is self -Turts. You can create the project by using file new and then selecting the Java project. I have already created it. So I'll come here and I'll create a new class file. So this new class file will be created and I'll name it as self -Turts. So a brand new class has been created and as we know that to run anything inside Java, we need a main class because JVM reads the main class or main class is the entry point of your application. So we'll define a main class that is public, static and then void and then main and this main accepts uh, in uh, string args that is string args and then the main method is completed. So this is the signature of main method in Java. So what we are going to do is we are going to create an integer array. So first of all, we'll declare the integer array. Okay, so we'll do declaration of integer array. So the declaration is done in which way int of array. So this array is a variable and since we are going to declare a one dimensional array, so we have provided only one bracket. Then we'll provide the new keyword and inside the new keyword we'll type int. Okay, so this is giving me error because we have not provided a size to this array. So we are going to create an array of size 8 which will contain these elements. So I will type the size as 8. Now when Java reads this particular line that is line 8, it creates something in the memory and that thing is what? It creates an empty structure in the memory with every element is assigned to zero. So whenever Java reads this line, that is line number eight, that is we are going to declare an array of eight elements. So Java creates a structure in the memory. So we are just uh, visualizing it that what happens when we create an integer array. So when integer array is created, then this structure is created in the memory and every element is initialized with zero. Okay. Now, since we don't need only zero in the element, we need to provide some value to it. So we need to provide one to index zero, two to index one and eight to index seven. So these are the numbers that we are going to put inside the index of these, this array. So what we'll do, we'll try to put the value one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight into the array. So I'll say array of zero. So I add zero index, I need to provide one. Same way I'll copy it and then I'll paste it. Sorry. So I'll copy it and then I'll paste it. So the zeroth index will be having one, the one index will be having two and then three and then four, same way five, then six and then seven and then eight. Okay, so same way I'll change the index here. So it will be 0, 1, 2 and then 3 and then 4 and then 5 and then 6 and then 7. Now one thing to notice here is that the size of my array is 8 but the index goes up to 7 only because the index is starting from 0. So the, the value of the index that is maximum index can be length of array minus 1. If you will try to access the index 8, it will give some exception that is array out of bound exception. So this is the array that we have created. So now when Java will read line number 17, so after that in the memory, the structure will be like this. Initially, when we were only on line 8, the array structure was like this. But after this line 17 will be executed by J JVM, the structure will be this because every 
uh, index will be given its element that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, our goal is what? We need to find the sum of these numbers. Okay, so sum of these numbers. So as you can guess here that if you want to find the sum of these number, then you need to access the element one by one. That is, suppose this is an array, that is the topmost part, this is the array. So if you want to find the sum, so you need to traverse the array because if you don't access each and every element, then how you will be able to find the sum. So you need to access one, then you need to access two, then you need to access three and when you are accessing it, you are maintaining some variable where you are adding those numbers. So it is very important to understand that when you are traversing the array from 0 to 7, you are going to each and every element one by one and then you are maintaining a sum variable where you will add these numbers. So we'll try to do it programmatically. So the first thing is what we need to maintain a sum. So the will maintain a sum as zero. So initial, we'll initialize the variable sum as zero and then what we'll do? We'll first loop over the array. So we'll try to loop to each and every element. So what we'll do here? I'll try a for loop because it is very easy. So I'll initialize the integer variable i as zero and for looping we need to uh, we need to run this for loop for eight times. So it will be what? The value of i should be less than what? Uh, 8 because this is the length of the array or we can write here we'll first take the length of the array as length of array as array dot length so we'll first calculate the length of array and then dynamically we can say that i should be less than length of array so what does this mean and i'll put here i plus plus so i'll explain you why i'm putting i plus plus so here what we are trying to do we are trying to find the length of the array by this length uh, variable on this array and then we are trying to uh, create a for loop which will run for how many times eight times why because we need to access the element each and every element of this array so there are eight elements present so we need to run the for loop for eight times so that we can access each and every element if the length of the array was 10 then we need to access the we need to run the for loop for uh, 10 times if the length of the array is 10. So this variable that is length of array will be dynamically calculated based on the uh, length of your array and this for loop will run for that many times. Now what first I'll do, I'll try to print the number. So we'll say system.out.print and then we'll print the number. So how we can print the number? We can print the number by accessing the number at this particular index. So when the value of i equal to 0, we'll say here array of i. So every time when this for loop will run, so the first time the value of i will be 0. So we'll access the array of 0 element which will be what? 1. Then the value of i will be increased by 1 and it will uh, be assigned as 1. So the next time when for loop will run, we will access the element array of 1. So this time it will be 2. Same way if we uh, go through this scenario only that every time the value of i increases, so we'll 1 by 1 access 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, and then 8. So when the value is 8, this, the value of i will be 7. So it will be increased by 1 that so the value of i will be uh, i will be 8 and when this particular uh, comparison will run that is i will be 8 and length of array is also 8 so 8 is less than 8 which is false and now the program will come to line number 28 and then it will exit so we'll try to print it and we'll also attach a space here so we'll add plus equal to so that we can view the output clearly now what i'll do i'll try to run this program so after running it, you can see here we'll access, we are getting the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Why it is there? Okay, so after 4, it will be 5 and then 6. Sorry. So it will be 6 and then again I'll try to run it. So this time I'll get a perfect output that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, we are able to access the element one by one, but still we have not calculated the sum. So what we'll do, we'll first delete this line and then what we'll do, we'll add these numbers that is one, then two, then three, then four, then five to this sum. So how to do that? We can write here 
we can write here that sum the number the variable sum will be equal to what the current sum plus the value of array at i so if you are a beginner in programming then this statement is very important for you to understand so when this statement will be executed by java uh, jvm machine then what will happen there are two things one is lhs and one is rhs rhs is executed first so when the rhs rhs is executed it will try to get the value of this sum variable so when the loop is run for the first time that is i equal to 0 then at that point of time the value of sum is 0 so it will be replaced by 0 and the array of i will be what array of 0 will be 1 so it will be 0 plus 1 equal to 1 and it will be provided it will be assigned to this sum variable so when the loop has been executed once then the value of sum is 1 now when the loop is being executed for the second time that is i equal to 1 then what will happen at that point of time the sum of the the sum variable is holding a value of 1 so it will be replaced by 1 and this array of i that is array of 1 so it will be 2 so 2 plus 1 equal to 3 so what is happening here so if i'll write uh, if i'll write in this term that loop 1 what will happen I'll come to the bottom here and I'll say when loop 1 is getting run then on the left hand side it will be sum and the value of sum is what 0 plus 1. Now when loop 2 will run then sum is equal to what? Sum will be sum and the previous sum value was what? 0 plus 1 which is equal to 1 and then array of i which will be this time what? 2 because we are, we are accessing array of 1. Same way if we go for loop 3 when the loop 3 then the value of i will be what 2 so sum will become what the previous sum value that is 0 plus 1 plus 2 so i am just writing it in this way so that you are able to understand and then array of 0 1 2 that is 3 so you are seeing a pattern here that first time we are getting 1 then 1 plus 2 then 1 plus 2 plus 3 same way when we will come to loop number 7 that is the eighth time it will be running then it will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 5 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 and then plus 8 in these three lines i was making you understand that what will happen internally so now what we'll do we'll try to print the sum value so it will be system.out.println and it will be sum here so now let's see what is the output so i'll copy it and it will and it is equal to what 36 so if you take the sum so 2 plus 1 equal to 3, then again 3, 6, 6 plus 4 equal to 10, 10 plus 5 equal to 15, 15 plus 6 equal to 21, 21 plus 7 equal to 28, and 28 plus 8 equal to 36. So the output is correct. So here inside the array there can be any number, it can be 10 here, then 5, then minus 2, minus 3, anything can be there. But this program will always find the sum of your numbers which are present in your array. So this was all about this video that how to find the sum of the numbers which are present inside an array. Hope you like this video. If you like my channel, please subscribe to it. Please share these videos with other people and happy coding.